Hello everyone, you all are welcome back to our YouTube channel Esculenta Science. If you are new to here and want to learn about food science and technology, please hit the subscribe followed by the bell. Today we are gonna talk about blanching and its importance to food industry. Let's see what is blanching. It is defined as the enzyme deactivation phenomena which helps in retaining color, reduction in initial microbial growth, cleansing the product, product preheating prior to processing, gas exhausting from plant tissue and helps to release carotenoids. Thus, it enhances the bioavailability and extractability. Usually, blanching is an unit operation prior to freezing, canning, and drying. Fruits or vegetables are heated for the purpose of inactivating enzyme, modified texture, preserving color, flavor, and nutritional value and removing trapped air. Most vegetables are blanched prior to freezing to inactivate enzymes that cause the development of off flavors and off colors during frozen storage. Blanching removes trapped air and metabolic gases within vegetable cells and replaces them with water, forming a semi-continuous water paste that favor a more uniform crystal growth during freezing. Fruits are usually not blanched or blanched under mild temperature prior to freezing because blanching produces undesirable textural changes. Gas removal is the main benefit of blanching before canning because it allows easier can fill, reduces strain on can during heating, and reduces can corrosion. Although in this case enzyme inactivation also takes place, it is not relevant because any remaining activity is destroyed on retorting. Before drying, fruits and vegetables are sometimes blanched. After blanching, vegetables are quickly chilled by spraying with cold water or by conveying them to a flume of cold water that often serves to transport them to the next part of the process. Blowing cold dry air has also been used to take advantage of evaporating cooling. Using the water adhered to the surface of the product. Hot water and steam are the most commonly used heating media for blanching in industry, but microwave and hot gas blanching have also been studied. Different hot water and steam blanchers have been designed to improve the product quality and increase the yield and facilitate processing of product with different thermal properties and geometrics. Water blanching is performed in hot water and temperatures ranging typically from 70 Celsius to 100 Celsius. However, low temperature, long time blanching, and combination of long time blanching with high temperature, short time blanching also been studied. Blanching usually result in more uniform treatment allowing processing at lower temperatures.
in steam launchers a product is transported by a chain or belt conveyor through a chamber where food grade steam at approximately 100 celsius is directly injected usually temperature in the head space is measured and the flow rate of steam is controlled steam launching is usually used for cut and small products and requires less time than water launching because the heat transfer coefficient of condensing steam is greater than that of hot water However, because of the high temperature gradients between the surface and the center of the product, large products or pieces of product can be over blanched near the surface and under blanched at the center. To increase heat transfer efficiency, forced convection blanches have been designed. Then next Let's see microwave blanching. It can retain ascorbic acid and carotene and very short processing time compared to conventional water or steam blanching. In general, the use of microwave ovens in industry is limited and at present. High value products are the most likely users for this technology. The shorter processing time of microwave ovens will result in reduced operating costs and higher value products thereby compensating for equipment cost. Then let's see hot gas blanching. Hot blast blanching uses combustion of flue gases with addition of steam to increase humidity and prevent product dehydration has been studied. This type of blanching has the advantage of reducing waste production, is comparable to conventional blanching with respect to nutrient retention, but often results in product weight loss. This approach is not currently used in industry and need further research. There are several factors which influence to the blanching time. They are type of fruit or vegetable, size of the pieces, blanching temperature and method of heating. And the product, the process and the final use of the product are the factors which influence the blanching system. There are some effect on food quality due to the blanching. Blanching can result in undesirable softening of vegetable tissues. However, calcium can be added to reduce the softening. A combination of low temperature blanching and calcium addition has also been shown to be effective in firming canned vegetables. The latter is due to the activity of pectin methyl esterase that produces pectin with a reduced degree of methylation that readily interacts with calcium. Blanching increases flavor retention and sometimes it removes undesirable bitter flavors from the product. When considered about the color, blanching can have both direct and indirect effect on color. The former is exemplified by the destruction of pigments such as chlorophyll by heat. A good example of an indirect effect is in potato processing in which the reducing sugar content can be adjusted via water blanching, affecting color development during later. More intensive heating steps 
the the Maillard reaction takes place. Color assessment in the food industry is commonly performed surely by comparison to standard instrument methods being based on reflectance also frequently used. So that is the end of today's lecture and you can find more information about fruits and vegetables blanching from research papers and ebooks or any other articles. If you found this video useful, please give it thumbs up and subscribe for videos just like this. Hope to catch you in next time with a new lesson and thanks for watching.